The upcoming release of Golang 1.24 introduces a significant security enhancement that might interest you if you deal with a lot of security measurements. The new OS.root type provides built-in protection against, for example, path traversal attacks, which in the end offers a robust and easy way to confine file operations to specific directories, for instance. This feature eliminates the need for manual complex path validation, making it in the end easier for developers to implement and maintain secure file handling in their application. Now let me quickly give you an overview of what even the os.root type really is. Now this type lets you just perform file operations that are strictly confined within a specific directory. Now it's important to note that this feature is just a smaller part of a bigger enhancement feature group of Golang 1.24 to generally increase the security of your applications. Now you might ask yourself why is this even important? Now this is a security enhancement that you can leverage to limit the access to locations outside of a directory. Now some specific real-world use cases to use this new feature of Golang 1.24 would include like simple file upload services or static file handling services. Now this would also include like for instance content management systems or even plugins. Alright now with that in mind let's quickly jump into the code on how we can actually leverage this new type. All right, let's quickly start with some code that actually can be exploited, right, in Golang 1.23. Now this function just really simply demonstrates how a simple file path .join, for instance, can be exploited. So let's quickly create a function here called read file. And this read file function just has some kind of input, right, or let's call it user input, which in the end is just a string. So here this user input should be the file path, right? And by any means, please do not use this read file function inside of a productive environment because obviously this is like exploitable and please do not use this. And by any means, you can obviously improve this function with correct error handling and so on and so forth. So let's just start by creating two files here. So let's just say os.write file. And then we say, first of all, public save.txt. So these two files are just temporary. And here we just create like the contents of the file, which in the end is just this is a save file. And then we use the octal file permission 0644. All right. And then we also create a file, which we will call secret.txt, right? These are just examples. And here with the contents, basically top secret, right? And then sensitive data, just for example. And then obviously we use 0644 as the octal file permission as well. Now with that in mind, it now creates two files. And what is important to note here that this os.write file function does not create the directory, so the public directory, right? So we have to create this manually, or for instance, we can just leverage the make dear function as well. And this 0644, which is in the end, like I said earlier, an octal file permission is to basically have a read and write access for the file's owner. And in the end, this save.txt file is a publicly accessible file, right? And the secret.txt file just contains some sensitive data and this should not be possible to read. So let's go back to our read file function and let's just introduce the vulnerability. So what we do is just file path and then we say file path dot join and then we just like, for instance, have the public directory and then the user input. So we are joining basically the public directory with the user input, right? So now in the end, we just have the file path, which could be like public and then for instance, save.txt. However, the important thing to know here, and this is where the vulnerability comes into place, is that we can also access the secret.txt file. Right, so this here would be a valid path as well. And this is really important to know. And what we can do now is basic file reading, right? So we say read file, and then we say file path. So in the end, we want to read the contents of this file. And if the error is not equal to nil, we're just using panic here for demonstration purposes. Obviously, you would have some sort of graceful error handling, right? Or we even return the error to the read file function. And then in the end, we just print the file contents. So we say file contents, right? And then we say string data to stringify the data basically. So I think this should be pretty clear and not too complex here. Let's go to our main function and then let's just leverage this function, right? So we say print line and then accessing save file, right? And then we say read file and then we access the save.txt file, which in the end 
should be possible. Now then we are going to say accessing secret file. And then we are reading the file, which in the end is secret, right? And then we use this path traversal tag, this really simple path traversal tag to read files outside of the public directory. So if we now run this code, everything works. And we do not want this, right? Obviously, we should read the save file, but we should not be able to read the secret file contents. Now, it's important to note that you can also fix this issue in like earlier versions than Golang 1.24, with, for instance, the file path .clean functionality and all sorts of other functionalities. However, the os.root functionality really enforces true directory confinement at the file system operation level, right? Unlike filepath.clean, where in the end it only sanitizes paths, but does not really actually prevent access outside a directory. And this is where os.root really comes handy. Now, a few disadvantages of os.root is actually that it requires additional file system overhead or extra memory usage. But generally, security outweighs these minor performance disadvantages. All right, now let's quickly fix this code here with Golang 1.24 and the new os.root type. So what we need is basically leverage the os.open root functionality. And don't worry if this shows you now an error because I'm not using Golang 1.24 for the language server here. So just don't worry about the error. This function actually exists in Golang 1.24. And this open root function basically returns a root and an error because obviously things can go wrong with the open root functionality. Now, if there is any error, we just panic again. And then in the end, we just close the root, right? And this close is really important to just clean up some memory and just close the actual root directory. All right. And now what we're actually going to do is leverage the root.open function, where we are going to say user input. And this can return a file and an error as well. Now, let's just get rid of the file path here. We do the same error check here just with the panic and then we defer the file close again to clean up memory and close the actual file that we've opened. And instead of like read file, we just leverage the read all function from our IO package or IO module in this case. And this just takes in a file which in the end gets read by the IO module. Okay, so what is actually going on with this code, right? What does all of this actually mean? Let me quickly explain here. Now, generally this code is now kind of safe, right? Because we leverage os.root to restrict the file access. Now, clearly there are other functionalities as well, like .create for instance, which mirrors most of the file system operations available in the OS package. Now, and then because we define the public directory in the open root function, with the root.open function call, all operations are now confined to basically the public directory, right? Because we leverage the root, so the return root of the open root function, right? So all the operations we are actually doing on the root, these are now confined to the public directory. So even with malicious input, you cannot really access files outside of the public directory. And this really blocks both direct and symbolic link-based escape attempts. Right, so let me quickly demonstrate this functionality here by just running this program with Golang 1.24 and then we say run main.go. And what we actually see now is a panic, right, where it basically describes that we try or the path tries to escape from the parent. And this is actually what we want, right? So the accessing save file still works and we can still read the contents of the file. However, accessing the secret file does not work anymore because now we are handling or doing all sorts of file handling operations on only inside of the public directory, right? Now, hopefully this makes a lot of sense here on when you would actually use it and why you would actually use this os.openRoot functionality. Now, again, you can kind of leverage other functionalities as well before Golang 1.24 to fix these 
path traversal attacks. But obviously this is a more clean and a more robust way. Now again to summarize this OS.root type it just provides a really secure and directory limit way to execute file system operations. So hopefully this was clear. Alright now hopefully you've learned something about how Golang 1.24 actually becomes a little bit more secure. Oh and by the way if you're curious about the weirdness of iterators of Golang 1.23 feel free to check out this video here as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.